you have your Bibles, open them up, or if you want to look in your notes, scriptures will be there as well. We're going to start here in just a moment in Proverbs chapter 25. We're in a series called Toxic. Today we're going to look at toxic influences in our life. I want us to kind of get a picture first of our culture. And you're going to help me kind of see where we are. How many of you like movies? Raise your hand if you like good movies. Hoosiers, still one of my favorites. Some of you are going, what is Hoosiers? Basketball, college, Indiana, that's all I need to say. (sighs) Ah, boom. (laughs) JD has watched it. Which one was better? The original Karate Kid or the new one? If you think it's the original Karate Kid, raise your hand. If you think it's the new Karate Kid, raise your hand. Good, good, good. Let me tell you why Cassie would know that the original is better for me. Her name is Elizabeth Shue, and I watched that movie as a teenager and fell in love with her. She never responded back. Yeah, amen. How many of you have seen Toy Story 3? Raise your hand. If you are a parent or a grandparent, did you cry at the end like I cried? I cried. It's a cartoon. And I'm crying at the end. There was a movie. I haven't seen it. Maybe you have. I know people who have. It won the Golden Globe for the best comedy back in 2009. I know that's some years ago. The name of the movie? The Hangover. Don't raise your hand. If you haven't seen The Hangover, I want you to consider a few things that was a part of that that movie that helps maybe describe the culture we live in. There were 91 different versions of the F-bomb in the movie. 91. There were 41 S-words, nine slang terms for some private parts of males and females, 13 H-E-double-L's, 14 A-words, 31 different versions of God's name in vain. 31 different versions. That doesn't include the sexual references. That include, does not include the sexual scenes. For every minute of the movie, there's an F-bomb. That's our culture. I remember the first time I saw UFC fighting. Anybody, anybody like UFC fighting? Okay, it's okay. Jesus helps us. I remember the first time I saw it, I couldn't watch it. I was like, oh, man. I mean, my stomach got a little upset. I was like, they are pounding big monsters of men and then little monsters of men. They are pounding on each other. There was one YouTube clip. A guy did an arm bar. I don't know if it's still legal or not, but that sucker popped. It used to turn my stomach, you know, but over time I'd watch it a little bit with one eye, you know. And then I kind of, oh, come on. Yeah. Over time, I've kind of watched it a little bit more, and it's become more palatable. Isn't it amazing in our culture, as followers of Christ, I love Jesus, you love Jesus, that our standards change over time. You could say that maybe we've been so desensitized to some things that used to turn my stomach, and now I kind of go, come on, smashing. A little confession of your pastor. We live in a culture that is desensitized to watching what used to be bad and horrible, and now it's good. We've allowed some toxic influences into our lives. Now, honestly, today, if if you saw on Facebook, I even mentioned last night, all week, this has been stepping on my personal toes. This is not one of those fun, love Jesus, everything's glorious moments of messages. So today should be tough for us all. It should be. If it is not something hard for us to swallow, maybe we're not really following Christ. 
Maybe we've just kind of gone through the motions enough, enough times, we've played the game enough times that it really doesn't bother us. Maybe we're not really trying to please God. But if we're following after Jesus, what we're going to look at in Scripture today should bother us. Maybe we've become not sensitive enough to God. Maybe we've become not sensitive enough to His Word and to His Holy Spirit. Because chances are, Every single one of us, we've watched something, we've listened to something, we've participated in something that had things in it that weren't pleasing to God. If today, if today in my message I dropped, like in the movie, 91 F-bombs, you'd be offended, I'd hope, and I'd be fired. If I did one, you would be offended, I would be fired. We're offended here. How offended are we of those things that displease God when we're not here? Just see the tension that we are in? Because a follower of Christ, boy, it's great on Sunday mornings. Hopefully all of us love Jesus, we worship God, we sense His presence, but then Monday comes and the rest of the week and we aren't around each other all the time and it's just us in our faith with the most holy God. And we can allow toxic things in our culture to influence us. Remember the definition we've used for, for uh, toxic through our series? It's this, anything containing poisonous material capable of causing sickness or even death. Anything, anything that can harm us, make us sick, spiritually sick, that can draw us away from God and even destroy our lives. If you're a follower of Christ, I think we all understand there's an evil force in this world. There's the leader of the evil force, Satan, who wants to what? Destroy us. His job still kill and destroy and he's very sly, he's very deceptive, he doesn't come to you on a pitchfork and horns, we're too smart for that. You know what he does? He starts to groom us. He starts to influence us. Week after week, month, maybe year after year, time over time, just a little bit of this, then just a little bit more, and then just a little bit more of wrong, sinful influences in our lives. Could it be that through all sorts of influences that our spiritual enemy is grooming us so that we take in that which is harmful and we call it good? Ah, oh, nothing's wrong with it, Pastor Brian. Come on, we're okay. Could it be that we are being groomed and poisoned. Now, if I had a bottle of poison right here and pretend I'm Satan, maybe you feel like it this morning, and I say, hey, would you take, drink this bottle of poison? We say, of course we won't. That is the craziest thing ever. But sometimes we allow the poison, the sin of this world to seep into our lives and to influence us to live a life that doesn't honor God. So you glad you're in church today? Smile. Smile with someone next to you because it's one of those put the seatbelt on and dear Jesus, help me through this. Where do these toxic influences come in our culture? All sorts of places. It may be the music, maybe the, the movies you watch, the stuff you look on your phone, the internet sites, the social media sites, the tweets you read, the magazines you pick up the video games you play, the people you allow to speak into your life. Let's look at Proverbs 25, verse 26. And it says this. Like a muddied spring or a polluted well is a righteous man who gives way to the wicked. Now, Proverbs is the wisdom. We need some wisdom in our culture. Like a muddied spring or a polluted well is a righteous man who gives way to the wicked. Could it be 
Today's the day we look at ourselves and are honest with ourselves. Could it be that today, maybe I've allowed my life to be muddied. Maybe I've allowed my walk with God to be polluted. Because maybe I've given in. Ah, oh, it's not that bad. Of toxic influences that the enemy of our soul, of our eternity, wants to put on us. This type of message can be very challenging because it could go one of two ways. I'm going to try to keep it out of both extremes. It could go to legalism, a bunch of rules, or it could go to the total opposite way. You just do whatever you want, but I am not going to go on either of the extremes. I want us to look at God's Word, and I pray that we just don't shake this off when we leave today. I pray this is something that marinates with us for a while and and we allow the Word of God to seep into our soul and our thoughts and our hearts and allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in us that only He can do. Because all of us, all of us, all of us need to guard ourselves. All of us need to be very careful with what we do and how we live this life. Ah, oh, Pastor Brian, it's not that bad. Let me remind you. Let me remind you. The enemy wants to destroy you. So let me give you a few things to remember. We're talking about toxic influences. First thing in your notes, we have to acknowledge that a little bit of poison goes a long way. A little bit of poison. Paul is talking to the Corinthians. He's talking to them how yeast easily spreads throughout the dough. Now when Yeast is mentioned in Scripture many times as a picture of sinfulness. So when we look at this verse in just a moment, we have to have in mind this, this yeast is referring to the sinfulness in our lives. And it says this, Don't you know a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast that you may be a new batch without yeast, as you really are. Or can we say, Let's get rid of a little bit of that poison that is polluting us. Let's get rid of that little bit of sin that is actually messing up our lives. I've shared this story before. It's been a while. But it applies for us today. There's a 14-year-old boy who went to his mom and said, Mom, some friends want to go to the movie. It's a PG-13. I'm 14 years old. I should be allowed and be okay to go watch this movie. Okay, Mom. He says, okay. Oh, uh, What's in the movie? Well, there's some bad words, and there might be a kind of, sort of, maybe not all the way looking kind of sex scene. Um, I think there's a little bit of violence in it, just a little bit of bad stuff, but not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. We've all probably said that with our parents. It's really not that bad. It's, it's just a little bit. She goes, okay, okay, fair enough. I guess you can go, but first, you know, because I love you so much, I'm going to make you your favorite dessert. I'm going to make you some brownies. Awesome! I love you, Mom. You're the greatest mom in the world. He goes off, and she starts to make the brownies. Mixes it all together. She goes outside to her little Fido, has a fresh dropping of dog poop. Takes just a little bitty spoonful of it. Walks back inside. <laughs> Mixing up the brownies with some dog poo. Just a little bit, though. I mean, it, it's a little bit. It's not a lot. It's, it's little, little itsy bitsy bit. Not much at all. Mix it up, puts it in the oven, pulls it out. They're cutting them up. Son, come on down. Now, like we said, you can go to the movies. Even though the movies just have just a little bit of bad stuff in it, you you can go. So here's your brownies. Oh, but before you eat your brownies, just know there's a little bit of Fido's poop in the brownies. Do we get the point? And you may be an adult today going, well, I, you know, this is good for my kids, but I can handle it. I can handle it. We don't want our kids or our grandkids to see it, but we're okay to do it to allow the bad, sinful, poisonous influences in our lives. We have to guard ourselves. Trust me, my toes have been stepped on. I got things to work on. 
just like all of us, we've got to guard what we consume in everyday life because there will always be some poop in the brownies that our culture offers us. Think of some of the shows that are out there today. Now, if I say your show, you aren't going to H E double L right away. <laughs> Playing. Bachelor, Bachelorette, don't, 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 don't whoop or holler or anything like that. What is the show about? Pretty much these guys who meet these girls or these girls who meet these guys, and after 30 minutes, they're in love. And uh, they're soulmates, and then you kind of step back and really see what this show is teaching, you know, because it has some poop in the brownies, and what it's really teaching us that everyone has to be super hot looking and true love is only found in a helicopter over a waterfall and you're supposed to marry that person, but if you're not sure who you're supposed to marry, you stay with one person one night, the next night you are with another person, and then the next night with another person, and then, oh, I guess I know who I'm supposed to be with for the rest of my life. Poop in the brownies, folks. Maybe it's your romance novels. I've never read one. But this is what I understand kind of the gist of it is. You're not happy. The pool boy looks really nice. And things happen. That's the gist is what I understand. A little poison, it goes a long way, folks. Second thing in your notes. Just because everyone does it, doesn't make it right. I might sound like your mama right now, and that's okay, because your mama is dead on correct on this one. Briefly, look at Romans 12, verse 2. And I want to read it to you from the message paraphrase. The message version, it's not a literal translation of the Bible. Let me remind you of that. It's a good devotional translation. It's a good pictures of what's going on. So in your daily reading of Scripture, the message isn't what I would suggest for you. It's not a literal translation, but it gives some good pictures and it's a good help in this one. It says this, Do not become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, but God brings out the best of you, develops a well-formed maturity in you. Just because everybody's doing it doesn't make it right. You know what I've learned about the majority? Most of the time they're wrong. Look in the book of Numbers, chapter 13. Twelve spies are sent out to check out the new land. Ten of them come back. You remember what the ten said? Wow, that land is awesome. That land is great. But hold on. There's some big giants out there and we'll be squished. The majority. The people go, oh, we're, well, yeah, you're right. We better listen to you. The two who are listening to God, the two who had God's heart says, yes, the land is really great and awesome, but guess what? God wants us to go and conquer it. God wants us to go do something great for him. Let's go. And what do the people do? Oh, no, 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 no. You're not the majority. Just because others are doing it doesn't make it pleasing to God and it can be hurtful to you. Number three in your notes. Just because I could doesn't mean I should. Let me be very clear. We have freedom in Christ. Maybe you came to church today and you were going a little bit faster than the speed limit told you to go. Do I think you'll still go to heaven? Well, I'm praying you are, so I can too. Yeah. Do I eat things that aren't the best for me and probably help me not be as slim as I want to be? Yeah, and I don't exercise like I should. Yeah, but I still follow love God. Will I go to heaven? Yeah. Yeah, I probably will, but should I live that way? Probably not. Could I go into debt buying all kinds of things I want to press people I don't even know and all that good stuff? I, I I guess you could and be a follower of Christ and go to heaven, but should is above another situation. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 
Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. We have freedom in Christ. And I'm not going to say there's some man-made standards that I'm going to give you to say how you're supposed to live your life. Like never see an R-rated movie, PJ, PG-13, not sure, PG, sure, go ahead. That is not really wise because honestly, with Easter coming up, if you haven't seen The Passion of the Christ, it's rated R, just to let you know. You need to see The Passion of the Christ. There are G-rated movies that are so anti-God and anti-Bible that I would never let my kids watch or for me to watch. To have a rating system like that isn't really going to accomplish what God wants us to have in our lives. We have to guard against toxic influences how sly, however sly the enemy wants to put it in our lives. Maybe you're a strong believer. Maybe you can handle some influences, and God has actually put you in some dark places to be a light. If that's you, you need to be the light in those dark places. But if you're kind of weak in the faith, if you're struggling, if you kind of are easily tempted, don't put yourselves in situations where you start to love the world more than you love God. We are called to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are called to be holy. That means to be set apart. That means to be different. If we as followers of Christ are not any different from non-Christians, I would say we probably really don't know Christ. And we're not following Him. If we are not different at all, than those who don't know Christ, then you really don't know him. You may think you do. You may pretend you do. But if you're not any different, we're supposed to be holy, set apart, his righteousness living within us, his purity living within us, the sanctification of his Holy Spirit working in our lives to get rid of those toxic, poisonous things in our lives. We have to be careful what we consume. You know, sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's an easy answer. Friend calls you, hey, you want to go see a movie? Sure, what are we going to see? Uh, the Hangover. The name alone should give you enough wisdom to say, no, probably not the best thing for me to be a part of. Or, or maybe you have some friends, guys, and then, you know, someone's getting married. Hey, they're having a bachelor party next week, and I don't know if I should go or not. Well, okay. But what are they going to do? Well, they're going to do a bunch of shots and go to a strip club afterwards. It should be obvious to not put yourself in that kind of situation. There's nothing good that comes out of a poisonous environment in your life. Some things aren't as obvious. Should I read this or listen to that or watch that or hang out with them? Some people have said, let your conscience be your guide. That's good advice when your conscience says, this is wrong, get away from it. But here's the problem. Most of the times we talk over our conscience. We argue with ourselves. Oh, it's not really that bad. I mean, it's going to be okay. I can handle it. It's not that big of a deal. There's a biblical phrase that says your conscience can be seared. There are times when something that should bother us doesn't bother us anymore. There are times when we allow influences to come into our life when we know we shouldn't, but we've allowed it over so much time and so much of our lives that our conscience has been seared. It doesn't affect us like it used to affect us. Even though it's bad and it's wrong and it's dangerous and it's hurtful, it's hurtful to us, it's hurtful to the heart of God, we still sometimes say it's not really that big a deal. I can handle it. I'll be fine. I've heard some people say, you know what? This thing over here, it bothers me a bunch. I can't handle that. But, you know, people saying, 
some profanity, you know, I, I can handle it. I'm okay with it. It doesn't bother me. Just because it doesn't bother us doesn't mean it shouldn't bother us, folks. Just because I'm used to it doesn't mean I should accept it. Just because it's common and the norm in our culture doesn't make it right. If we get to the place where sin doesn't bother us, folks, that's dangerous. We're not going to be judgmental. We're not going to point fingers. Because we all have the plank in our own eyes before we try to figure out the speck in someone else's for the most part. But if sin doesn't bother us, it says a lot where we are with God. So how do we deal with toxic influences? 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 21 22. One of the best verses I think kind of deals with this. Say the first two words with you. Ready? Here we go. Test everything. Test everything. We hold on to the good and avoid every kind of evil. Test it. Is this good? Is this bad? Every kind of evil we avoid. If it's sin, if it's wrong, if it's not helpful, if it's hurtful to God, if it's hurtful to me, the Bible tells us, Avoid it. That is what we are supposed to do. Avoid it. Run from it. Get away from it. Don't allow it to seep into your soul. So let me give you a few questions before we end today that might help us figuring out, is this good or is this bad for us? Number one, am I entertained by sin? Am I entertained by it? The article, the book, the movie... Is this wrong in God's eyes? Am I entertained by sin? I've heard people say, oh, this movie is so funny. Oh, it's, 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 it's hilarious. It's, it's the best movie. You know, I love funny movies. I love funny TV shows. I love funny people. But if in this moment I said some hilarious in some minds racial joke, it's not very funny. It's wrong. I think it's sinful. Just because something is funny doesn't make it right. Am I allowing things in my life to entertain my life that really God goes, would you please stop? Would you please stop doing that? Stop going there? Stop listening to that? Stop allowing those things to flood your mind and your heart? Would you please stop? Second thing, is it pleasing to God. God is our holy creator and sustainer of all things. Scripture talks about he is so holy that man cannot look upon him in his purest essence and live. We are to live lives that bring glory and honor to God. If it's not pleasing God, we shouldn't do it. Pastor Brian, I enjoy that. Happy for you. But if it's not pleasing God, why are you doing it? Oh, I know why. Because all of us face it. The battle of myself and God. That's the battle. That's the battle. Am I going to please me? Am I going to be in charge? Or am I going to surrender everything to God and submit my life to Him in such a way that I live my life and it actually honors Him? Third thing in your notes, please come. Fine. Does this lure me away from Christ? Remember, it's just a little bit. Just a little bit here. Just a little bit there. A little bit here. And you keep on following the crumbs. You keep on following the little bits of poison. Does it lure me, lure me away from Christ? Here's what I think we have to look at ourselves and evaluate ourselves with this. Have I, have you, 
have we forgotten the true standard of this life? Once we remember the true standard, God's holy word, we will be able to interpret everything else according to the true standard of God. Instead of my standard being your opinion or my opinion, or the standard of whatever the culture says is good for me or bad for me, the standard for how we're supposed to live our lives is God's holy word. And as the Holy Spirit brings that to life in us, So you might be going, oh, great, Pastor Brian. Now I don't know if I can watch this show or go there. What am I going to do with all my extra time? Let me give you a few suggestions. Spend time with your kids, your grandkids. Serve in the church. Be involved in your community. Mentor somebody. Lead a life group. Open up God's Word and see what it has to say and consume it rather than toxic things. Here's my prayer for us that we stop eating the brownies with a little bit of poop in it. And we feed on the truth of the Word of God. You know what that does? It resets our thinking. It resets our heart. It resets our dreams and our hopes and our plans. Allow the Word of God, allow God in His presence, allow the people of God to be the influence in your life that you hear the most, that you are around the most, that you listen to the most, that you allow to sink into your soul. Your life will be different if you do that. But if you just like eating the brownies, it seeps into your soul. If you're not careful, it will destroy you. We are free in Christ. You know what we're free to do? We are free to please God. That should be our goal. God, this freedom, this salvation, this grace you've given me, this freedom is so I can truly please you. This freedom is so I can truly honor you and follow you and love you with everything within. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? There are some Sundays where my goal is to encourage us in His Word. But as the shepherd of this flock, it is also part of my job to tell you the truth. 